Uh, we are group we are group 29 team knock your socks on and this is our final concept selection. Our team has chosen to address the problem of putting on socks for those who struggle with this task and therefore develop a device that will assist in this process of putting on socks. The main problem is people cannot reach down to put the socks on and or they are not strong enough to stretch and pull the socks over their heel. The goal is to make the process and or act of putting on the socks accessible, um, easier and more comfortable. The stakeholders for this problem include the elder, elderly community, people with disabilities, caregivers and nurses. We began with user research, which consisted of having open conversations with the various stakeholders. And our key responses included an 85 year old grandmother that claimed she could no longer put on socks because she couldn't bend over far enough to reach her foot. And another 91 year old grandmother who was adamant that she was too weak to pull the socks up over her heel to up and up to calf level. Um, the information was also gathered from these people detailing how existing sock assist devices still required bending and pulling to be performed by the user. And as shown here, both the Jobs Stocking Donner and the RMS Deluxe Sock Aid, which are two of the most popular existing solutions, uh, require the user to bend over to apply the sock to the device and then physically pull the device onto their foot. Uh, from the interviews and research on existing solutions, the most important customer requirements were identified as reducing the need for bending, limiting knee and back movement, and not requiring intricate hand or foot movements, and um, being user-friendly and intuitive. Uh, from our customer requirements, we identified a comprehensive list of functions and created a function structure diagram to understand how the device will move through the process of putting on a sock. Of these, the essential functions are to move the device up to the user, stretch open the sock, and lift the sock onto the foot. In order to quantify the customer requirements, we developed a list of engineering characteristics. We identified vertical travel, number of user interactions, and force to pull up the sock as the top three ECs. Um, our targets for these values are two to three feet of vertical travel done by the device, which will allow the user to sit on the bed while using it, uh, five user interactions, and three kilograms of force, which we found experimentally through the use of an Arduino and attaching pressure sensors to a sock. From the engineering characteristics, power output and toughness fell out, and then the remaining ECs became our decision criteria. The top three engineering characteristics followed through to be the top three decision criteria, as shown in the AHP results that will be discussed shortly. Vertical travel reduces the need for bending, the number of user interactions makes the process efficient for the user, and the device pulls up the sock, eliminates the, eliminates the need for the user to grab and pull up anything. All right, so the list on the left is the set of product functions that our group evaluated as a process of putting on a sock. And as Brandon mentioned, uh, the, this was taken from the design criteria we see on the right was taken from the engineering characteristics. The top three that we see that vertical travel, time to put on sock, and number of user interactions, those are the top three uh, engineering characteristics that our group thought would be the main uh, design criteria. So the actual uh, concept development phase, this was included by the three main product functions that we used, which was stretching open the sock, putting on the sock, putting the sock on the foot, and moving the sock in the vertical direction. For each of these product functions, uh, our group drew three different concepts for each, meaning we had nine total. And what we did was a concept development selection phase. Excuse me. What this entailed was gro uh, grouping similar concepts together within each product function. So this was a three-step process. The first step uh, included was coming up with initial concept, which meant drawing individually for a couple minutes uh, with no group interaction. The second step was sharing these results within the group and discussing. And finally, the third step was to expand the concepts again individually using ideas and additions from the previous uh, concept at and after the uh, group input. So after we had uh, group similar concepts together, each person in the group vouched uh, for one concept to be thought out and examined. We did a process of discussing and choosing the group to see which concepts will be feasible and uh, checked off each design criteria that we had. Uh, this was a similar process to narrowing down the options or ideas we had as a group. Uh, at this point of the process, we had, sim uh, we had solutions to the product, but as uh, Robert will explain soon, uh, we utilized a quantitative approach as well. So throughout this process, uh, we had concepts that worked and we had concepts that you know, didn't, didn't uh, work so well either. Uh, these concepts were not within our reasonable consideration due to the fact that these designs didn't fulfill the product functions and lacked associations to customer needs. Uh, these, particularly these designs were neglected. This was a method we also used to deselect concepts that uh, as a group we didn't need. So to get, uh, we narrowed it down to five concepts um, and then we put each of those into um, our Q matrix to narrow it down to three. So the first five that we talked about, um, here's the first one, it's the inside out via sock. 
rollers with tracks. Um, basically, the idea is the sock will be inside out. You will slide it over the rods. The piston will open the ends of the rods. And then the user will rest their heel on the heel cup on the back in gray. And then the device will slide forward, moving the sock over their foot and unrolling the sock right way in onto their foot. The next one that we took the that we were discussing is a vertical step in via rollers. So the difference here is that you have the sock like inside of a box and it's clipped and held on up top in a hole. And then the user will just step into the sock. Um, and that's our second concept that we moved through. Um, the third one we talked about is our gear and pinion. Uh, it's a mechanical pivot thing. So basically the idea is that on the bottom, you'll see a flanges that will open the top of the sock. And then on the top two, you'll see there's like a gear and pinion that will move the sock up the leg of the user. And then the fourth idea we had was like a roller clips. So basically the idea is that the sock will be rolled up um, like women do for hose, pantyhose, and then you put the toe of your foot into the sock and then it'll unroll and move out as you put your step into the sock with your leg. And then our last concept that we moved into the Q matrix was a thin plates idea. So basically the, the user will pull the sock over two thin plates. The plates will be expanded. The user will put their foot in and then the user will slide the sock and their foot out of these thin plates. So we put all of these into our uh, Q matrix and it got narrowed down. Basically we had our, on the far left, our baseline was the RMS Deluxe Socket, which is one of the most popular devices on Amazon. And we compared each of those concepts with pluses meaning they're better than or neg minus being they're less worse than or zeros being the same as for each of our decision criteria. Um, and then on the bottom, we pulled out the top three. Um, so these were concepts one, two, and three um, from left to right. Um, concept, the first concept and the fourth concept were tied, but after discussion, um, we realized that uh, the fourth concept was not as feasible and it was simpler and better to use um, with the first concept. Um, so the three concepts that came out of it, this is one, this is the one uh, inside sock via rollers. Basic, like I explained before, the idea is that the sock will be inside out and forced onto the foot, making it right side in. Um, and it'll have these tracks that will slide out from underneath the bed where this thing will be stored. The second one that made it through, like I said before, is the step in. So it's a box. Again, stores underneath the bed, slides out. The user will put the sock down, clip it in, step into the sock. And the last one that moved through was the gear and pinion. And this will, again, open the sock. Uh, the user will step in and it'll raise up the sock up the leg. For selecting a concept, the analytical hierarchy process known as AHP was used to determine the best concept out of our top three concepts from the Pew analysis. At first, we rated each decision criteria in comparison to another using an AHP template on Excel. Each number on the table indicates a pairwise comparison between the DC on the left column to the top row. Uh, a number of one indicated that they were about equal and anything above one indicated that the DC on the column was preferred to the one on the top row. The results followed the order of our engineering characteristics that were used in our decision criteria. The results indicated that the weight of the device should have the least impact on choosing a design. This makes sense given that the remaining top three designs are either on wheels or a track and will be powered to move to the user. None of these designs require the user to pick up the device. Uh, vertical travel, the number of user interactions, and pulling up the sock rank the highest. And design concepts that meet or exceed other concepts in comparison for these DCs will have the greatest impact in the end. Um, so using the HP comparison was made between concepts for each decision criteria as well. So the vertical travel addressed one of our main human factor considerations, which is bending. So one of the main purposes of our product is to reduce bending. So the device will need to reach up to the user's waist or knees when sitting. Uh, the inside out sock concept and the gear and pinion concept scored equal 
and the highest because they'll both meet the appropriate height for the user to put the sock on the device. And then a large portion of our target audience is elderly people who may not be familiar with technology or learning how to use new technology. For this reason, we want to limit the number of steps the user has to take to use the product. From our top three concepts in pairwise comparison, we found that the gear and pinion concept will require the most user interactions while the inside out sock will require the least as indicated by the AHP results on the right. Um, so there are a number of human factors that limit the ability for the user to pull up the sock, which is why it's important that the device does so. Uh, these limitations range from the reduced hand and arm strength to the reduced back and unit mobility. According to the CDC, this includes over 1.7 million nursing home patients and one in four adults who suffer from arthritis. Uh, for this decision criteria, the results are similar for the vertical movement. However, vertical step and concept received a slightly higher score in comparison to what it received for the vertical travel due to the user not needing to bend over and put on the sock. Uh, the time to put on a sock is also part of our decision criteria and it ranked in the lower middle among them. Uh, the vertical stepping concept was expected to take the least amount of time to put on a sock and thus making it have the highest score for this DC. So there are also other human factors that limit potential users from opening a sock. This limitation could be given by several reasons such as severe osteoarthritis, lack of force, or even an imputation of harm. For this decision criteria, the score of all three alternatives were the same, given to the fact that all concepts address this function. Another decision criteria that was considered was volume volume. After performing our interviews with the potential customers, we found out that it was needed to have a relatively small device in order to make it easier for the customer to have it on the room and being able to store it under the bed. <laughs> Taking in consideration the total volume, including the track, here and pinion with mechanical pivot was a concept that scored the highest on our AHP. Moving to the final result, after calculating the weight of each concept at the different decision criteria, we observed that inside out sock by roller on track was a concept that obtained the highest score. In particular, this concept performed relatively better compared to the alternative concept on number of user interaction. This is reasonable since this is the only device that is fully automated. While this device will not solve all the problems that a potential customer will probably face in their everyday, it will contribute to the feeling of autonomy of them. This will definitely help thousands of individuals to avoid asking for help for a basic need such as putting a sock on strengthening their self-esteem and independence. So as previously stated by others in the group, this is the final concept. Um, it was greatly explained by Rob. Uh, here is an annotated photo just analyzing and showing which each uh, aspect of the final design is. So again, it's on tracks. Um, then I'll move out from under the bed. The user will put the foot, their heel in the stabilizer and it'll be moved forward inside out until it's completely onto the foot. So next slide will show functions a little bit more detail just to give different views of it. So pretty much the inside out sock will be placed over top of the rods so that it can easily move onto the foot as it's moved forward. And then in the next photo, you can see the foot where it'll be placed relative to the sock with the rollers and how it'll roll onto the foot. So strengths we're gonna build on based off the final design is it's easy removal of this foot with the sock. If you just move the foot out and you have the sock on for the day, it's remote controlled so it's easy for the person to press the button and have it move. And then easier under the bed storage since we have the track that'll move back and forward, also remotely controlled. So as weaknesses, things we need to improve on. Um, not sure if all, the so all types of socks can be used with this device. So we wanna make this device universal for different types of socks. So we gotta make sure can it will not be, so we gotta improve on that. Users remote, this is also kind of considered a weakness since these are elderly people, there's a chance they'll forget where they put the remote, lose it, any problem with that, not knowing how to replace the batteries. So that's something that's a strength and a weakness. So it makes it easier, but there's also an aspect of difficulty. And then turning the sock um, inside out prior to use, they still need to do some of that with their hands. And if they have arthritis, it might be a little difficult. So we have to figure out like how that weakness, we can improve upon it. Next slide. Thank you. And so these are our final citations. And then here's our task tracking.